Welcome to How We Grow, an essential playbook to grow and scale your vacation rental business with advice and insights from the best in the biz with your host, Linnell Gordon. I'm Linnell Gordon, and I'm with Jennifer Mucha this morning, and she is going to share with us a couple of really good tips on growing your property management business. And she knows her experience. She's been doing this for over 20 years, and she's incredibly successful. So tell me a little bit about yourself. Okay, so I'm Jennifer, and I started a company called Arrived about 21 years ago now. I bought a vacation rental, and I started having it with a property management company for like three months and realized I could probably do it better. It was 12 miles from my house. So we ought to just, you know, try it ourselves. And I was back in the day where you have Verbo and then people had books on the tables. Right. So like so many of us did. And I never had the book. I like to look at the book, but I never had the book. So I started small using only Verbo as a platform. Grew the business myself doing everything for the first several years, just learning all the parts of it. Not intentionally, but unintentionally just learning all the parts of it. And then when my kids were in school, elementary school, full-time. I always tell everybody I had the choice of PTO or something else. And I was not going to be the PTO mom. So So I dove straight into growing the business. I had been turning people away for years. Where are you guys located? Based in Bend, Oregon, but I manage properties in Bend, Sun River, Kauai, Oahu, Palm Springs. So yeah, kind of all over the West Coast. Wow. Well, good for you. Yeah. So For people that are looking to grow their property management business, what is the best piece of advice you would give them? The big general overview is have your ducks in a row. And I think that I had a good concept of that when I decided that I was going to grow it. Mm -hmm. I've actually found Streamline and said, okay, this is the one that I want to grow with. I needed something that was going to take a lot of the work off my plate that could be done repetitively. Mm -hmm. Take that, put it into a software. I needed it to be cloud-based. This is back when there were choices of cloud-based versus not. So, you know, I needed it to be cloud-based so I could do my work from anywhere and I needed it to be integrated with everything. So I think just having your ducks in a row software-wise is huge. Make sure you find the right partner. I think that's really good advice. Yeah, it's huge. It made it so that I could go from five properties to 20 properties and still do it all. And so that was huge, being able to just replace myself times four with a software. That's pretty big. That's everybody's dream. Right? That's their dream. Find a piece of software that just what you do and let them do it. Yeah. And I've done that through the years. We had gone through a process of growing, growing, growing through acquisitions and organic growth for several years. And the fall before COVID hit, we went through and spent three months just like, okay, where can we revamp and become more efficient and what tools are out there that we aren't using yet or how are we using tools where we could use them differently so reviewing that on a regular basis it went so well that year that I think it's become one of the patterns of just like all the time we're looking but every year for sure every fall you know this morning I'm looking through through the vendors and different processes yeah and going wait a second I had this great idea we could do this and that would save this person time and it's not that I want to eliminate jobs and we don't eliminate jobs because we keep growing it's that we want to make people more effective in their positions and give them more more responsibility. To worry about what's happening with the guest as opposed to what's happening operationally. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Which is my other point. I think you have to have your software in place and really use that. I think the other big deal is having your processes in place because that's probably one thing that I could have done ahead of the game. I was a little bit reactive in that years ago when I started growing was I hired somebody and asked them to help, but I didn't have great processes. Like they were in my head. They weren't written down. I didn't have a company culture that I had verbalized or written down in any way. So all those things that are like your specific day-to-day processes and your personality of your business, you have to be able to communicate those with people when they start so that then they know what they're doing and how to do it well and efficiently. Because you can have all this great software, but if somebody doesn't know what you're wanting to do with a software. I know, it's true. (laughs) Jennifer, if people want to reach out, maybe they need a mentor and they're interested because you are in many different areas and you're successful at that. Can they reach out to you? Of course. What would be the easiest way for them to reach you? LinkedIn is very easy. My name's unique, so I'm out there. It is. That's true. (laughs) And I respond. I get email notifications. I'll respond via LinkedIn and we can connect that way. That's probably the easiest way. And I'm always happy to help. I think that's been one of the fun things in the whole process is I love having happy guests. I love having happy owners. But being able to help other companies, yeah, yeah, I love that. That's like really heartfelt. And it's been in the last few years, especially just as you watch people kind of have a company that 
is floundering a little bit. Yeah. And if you can just sit down and have coffee with them and talk. <laughs> Zoom, guys. You could Zoom together. Oh, totally Zoom. And a lot of times it helps me, too. I'm not doing it for me. I'm doing it because I love to help people and make people happy. But it does at the same time when you're feeding off of people's ideas. So you have somebody that has experience and you have somebody that needs some advice. The person with experience talks it out and comes up with more things to try, too. So there's definitely a win-win for everyone involved mentoring. And I'm always happy to help. No, that's great. Built by property managers for property managers. Streamline is a powerful software that gives managers enterprise-level capabilities to drive more revenue and improve operational efficiency. Migrate into Streamline allows property managers to gain functionality while reducing the need for multiple vendors, improving flow by logging into a single system and reducing redundant technology costs. With Streamline, property managers achieve revenue lifts by leveraging our fully-fledged communication center, reservations quoting system, revenue management tools, homeowner acquisition CRM, and powerful direct OTA connections. Streamline also has industry-leading trust accounting and report capabilities to give you clarity in an overall company performance. Learn more about Streamline Vacation Rental Software at StreamlineVRS.com. So we're creating a group of mentors. Would you mind telling me your favorite guest story? I know I put you on the spot, but I'd like to know, are there any guests, when you think back over the years that you've been in property management and the things that you've encountered in your guests, we had a really good one this week. Do you have any that you would like to share? Yeah, I actually love the repeat guests, obviously, more than anything. And there's obviously more than one reason we all want repeat guests because that means we did well. It means that we aren't paying an OTA. It means that the guest had a great time, so they came back. The house was amazing, so they came back. But we have a guest that has been coming since I started, and they still come to the same oh, house. God. Yeah. And the first few years, it was so fun to have them be a repeat. And I was like, kind of gives you this rush, and you're like, yay. And then they missed a year or two, and I was like, oh, what went wrong? I wonder what happened. I hope they're all okay. You know, but their kids were, I guess, in high school. You know, they reached out a couple years later. They always came in August. Now they come in September. So those people are still booked every year. It's the warmest feeling. It makes it a family, truly. You know, we talk about family too much, probably, but it really is a family. We're a family in this business, which is why I, I don't think you love to help people that much. I don't think you can talk about that aspect of our business too much because we are so used to being guest focused that when we meet other property managers, like in our roundtables, we connect on so many levels because we see the same thing. Yeah. And it's the same with guests. You have this connection because they know your house. You know their kids. You know that their kids now graduated. Their kids are at college where they're at college. And right. You um, up with them at that time. Yeah. In fact, I wonder if they're going to have grandbabies soon and bring them. You Wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> oh, of course they would. <laughs> really. I know. We have a group that was coming to the same house at Holden Beach for 18 years. Yeah. And the dad who had started it got sick. And it's not coming this year. And so, I mean, you think about the fact that I'm thinking about this, because you remember it, and you think about the fact that you've connected with these people for this many years. That's good advice, guys. Connect with your guests on levels like this. I mean, when you do that, it shows up in your life. Yeah. Yeah. Ask them questions. They want to talk. The guests want to talk. The owners want to talk. Oh, they want to talk about themselves. They'll talk to them. Definitely. Yeah. You want to know why they're on vacation, what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's an important thing that I had a conversation with some people about recently is that all this technology is so great. It makes it efficient. Pick your software, make it part of your team, but personalize that software. It's so easy to do now. Give that software your voice so that when you use it, it comes across as you genuine, that you're having a communication still with someone and all those things. I firmly believe you can use AI even for that voice yeah. to help. But there are so many ways to make that software work for you. Don't use it in fault letters. <laughs> no, please don't. Exactly. <laughs> and pick up the phone and call people. So you have all these tools. Use it and make it have your voice. I think that's huge. Then a lot of times you can give your voice. Like some of the softwares you're able to actually put the script in for your property management reservationist to say. And you can use your voice there. But yeah. And having those things written out, don't you think that's important? I think it's super important. And that's the thing about bringing on a team. Like, I didn't do that initially. And so bringing on a team that knows what's in my head is huge. So write it out, give them things that are written out, and then tell them, you know, don't memorize this. Make it you. Make it your personality. Because it needs to be our business voice, but it also needs to have human personality involved, too. Let me ask you one more question before we go, because I have time. 
if you look back over the last 20 years, what kind of things do you look over your shoulder and say, gosh, I wish I hadn't done that. I wish I'd done this sooner. I wish I hadn't done that at all because now you know better choices. What kinds of things would you give advice to people who are starting to grow? I just said you should use all the technology to make your business better. Watch out. There's a lot of it. You don't need it. Think it through. Really research it. Don't get into a technology that you don't need that you're paying for that isn't beneficial. We've all done that. Yeah, I have. Yeah, you can come up with your tech stack that's perfect for you, or you can come up with a tech stack that's a big mess and doesn't make sense. So I think that's huge. The other thing is that research, I am going to divulge my least fine moment. (laughs) Don't take money from investors unless you really know what you're getting into. So I did it. It took several years to unwind and it was, I'm back you know, as of a few years ago. But it just took a lot of my time and my energy and my resources to get back out of that. And it wasn't good. Like, go with your gut. But I listen to my gut and you just don't know. So I would just say, if you really want your own business and you don't want to have investors, don't get sucked into the glitz and glamour of that, just like you shouldn't get sucked into the technology. There's no reason we can do it and we can do it well and we can do it profitably on our own. There's no reason to get into investors. My intent was acquisitions and things like that. There's better ways to do things. I have a whole lot of advice on that. You know, If you're going to take an investor, my advice is don't do it until you're ready to sell your company and get rid of it. Then you're all done. Yeah, but taking it on and and having that partnership, then you're indebted to someone else for what's happening in your business. And yeah, and they were silent, like they were supposed to be for a while and it was fine. And then it wasn't. And the world right now is so into private equity and it all just sounds so amazing. And I just fear for all the people that do the same thing and then regret it. You know, you can sell your business even and then build a new one because we all know how to do that. Right, right. That's totally feasible. And go do that if that's something that's appealing to you. Not to me, but I want my business. I want the one that I made. But if that's something that's appealing, do that. But just make sure you actually have your goals aligned with your choices that you make and the potential offshoots of what your choices are going to do for you. We've all been into software and gotten software that we didn't need or we didn't use. I'm very guilty of that myself. Thank you for coming. I'm really grateful for coming and for taking the time to do that. And I hope you have a wonderful conference. This episode of How We Grow was brought to you by Streamline. To find out more about how Streamline can help grow your vacation rental business, visit StreamlineVRS.com. Make sure to search for How We Grow in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Google Podcasts, or anywhere else podcasts are found and hit subscribe so you never miss an episode. On behalf of the team here at Inhabit, thanks for listening.